Welcome to Blazor Component Basics. My name is Ed Charbonneau, Senior Developer Advocate for Progress Software and Microsoft MVP. Over the next few minutes, we'll be learning about component basics. We'll learn how to build a weather component using Razor components. Through this process, we'll use the parameter attribute to expose component properties, and we'll use render fragments to enable child components. Let's start by understanding the composition of a Razor component. Razor components are an ASP.NET component model created for the Blazor framework. A typical Razor component is made of directives. They also include Razor markup, which is HTML in the Razor syntax. For component logic, we use C-sharp code identified by a code block, and styling is performed by CSS. Values and events from our code block can easily be bound using the Razor syntax. Now that we understand the composition of a Razor component, let's jump over to Visual Studio and build a weather component. Let's start with a brand new Blazor application. Now it doesn't matter if we use client-side or server-side Blazor because the application architecture applies to both. To begin, we'll add a new page to our application. To do this, right-click on the Pages folder, choose Add, New Item, and then select Razor Component from the list. We'll call this component weather.razor. At the top of the component, we'll add a page directive and give it the slash weather page route. Now that we have a weather page, let's create a reusable forecast component. In our shared folder, let's add another component. This time, we'll call it forecast. In the forecast component, we'll start with some basic markup. We'll add a container element. We'll also add a span that will control the graphic that is displayed inside of the forecast item. We'll add an element where we can display the temperature. And we'll also add an element where we can display the status of our weather item. In this case, we're going to start with rainy weather expected on Monday. This static HTML is the most basic type of component we can have. If we go back to our weather page, we can create an instance of the forecast component now. To style the forecast item, we'll open the site CSS file and add some specific styles for this component to the style sheet. The forecast styles include sunny, rainy, and cloudy weather, and a container item, selected item, and style for temperature. With the styles added, we can now run the application and see a preview of our weather component. Next, we'll add some parameters to make the component more flexible. In Blazor, parameters are simply properties with a parameter attribute. Let's add a parameter to our forecast component to control whether the forecast is rainy, sunny, or cloudy. To do this, we'll add a string parameter called Outlook. Next, let's write the Outlook parameter to our display class. We'll also call to lower on the value so it matches our CSS selector. We repeat this process for each parameter that we'd like to add to our component. Let's add a parameter for temperature and day of the week. We'll wire these up the same way by changing the static value with a value that matches the property below. If we go back to the weather page, we can now set the forecasts outlook, temperature, and day of the week properties. When we run the application, we can see our forecast component and the values set for the properties that we defined. Next, we'll display multiple forecast components and programmatically set their values. First, we'll add a using statement to ensure that our component has access to the correct dependencies. We'll also add a field to hold an array of weather forecast values that we'll display in our component. For the purpose of this demo, we'll randomly generate some data, but normally this would come from a web request or from Entity Framework. Next, we'll tap into the component's onInit lifecycle method and set the forecasts field to the generated data. This will give us some data that we can iterate over and display more forecast components. In our markup, we can use Razor to create a for each loop around our forecast component. As we iterate through our list, we simply set the values to our parameters on the forecast component. 
And finally, we'll wrap the forecast component in a deflex container. This will allow even distribution using a bootstrap CSS class. When the application is run, the for each loop repeats over the forecast component, displaying a full week's worth of weather. Next, we'll utilize a render fragment to enable customization of our forecast component. A render fragment is a special class in Blazor that enables components to have child content and templates. To add this functionality, we'll just create a new property that returns a type of render fragment. We'll call it custom message. Inside of our component where we would like the child content to be rendered, we'll simply write out the value of that property. Back on our weather forecast page, we can set the custom message to whatever we'd like. We simply open up a new tag called custom message and then fill in the content with other components or logic that we'd like to have. In this case, we'll check for the weather forecast and see if it's rainy and display a tornado warning if it is. The display for the tornado warning will simply use a bootstrap alert box. When we return to our application, we can see several of our forecast components are displaying a custom tornado warning message. This shows how flexible components can be in Blazor as we can add other components or child content in this area. In this video, we learned about component basics with properties and render fragments. In the next video, we'll learn how to properly handle component events.